When people think island, they often picture a tropical beach. You know, crystal clear turquoise waters with swaying palm trees. The island we're checking out today is more for hiking boots than swimsuits, though it does depend on the season. After all, we're in the PNW, the Pacific Northwest. Today we explore Whitby Island. I filmed here at a tiny house last summer and hung out around Langley. This time it's a last minute day trip with Mommy O and we show you different spots to eat and visit, like this bakery next to a coffee roaster. We also go on a garden stroll and drive through a lonely landscape, home to delicious food and an abandoned military base. Remember to like this video and let's get this chill travel vlog started. Hello, Hello darlings. darlings. Today, Mommy O and I, we are going on a last minute trip to an island. Just last night at like 9 p.m. I decided, you know what, we're gonna go. <laughs> I just uploaded a video yesterday and I was thinking maybe I should take the whole day off, not film, not do anything, but we're gonna go somewhere beautiful. So I'm like, okay, well, actually we do have to film this. <laughs> Usually when we film, uh, I plan a very extensive itinerary. And it takes a lot of time and research to create itineraries, especially because I wanna show you guys cool places. But for this time, it's gonna be more chill. Today we have a very flexible itinerary. I have a list of spots that would be awesome to visit, but it's okay if we don't hit them all. We ride the ferry from Mukatio to Clinton. The cost varies upon the type of vehicle and passenger. You could check out the ferry website for the detailed price list. The ride was about 20 minutes. First, we seek breakfast and coffee, which takes us through a foresty path. Right as we got out of the car, take a whiff of the air and smell so roasty. Coffee's in the air. Next to Mukatio Coffee Roasters is Sea Biscuit Bakery. It's open until 2 or until they sell out. So we use whole ingredients in all of our foods. We don't use artificial flavors, colors, or dyes. So everything you see is naturally colored and naturally flavored. So that is a blueberry whipped frosting on there. There's so many items here that you normally can't find at any other bakery on Whippy Island that we sell. All the way down to our authentic Queen of Malls, which are super pretty and just sugar coated and baked in a convection kind of style in like a cupcake pan. And it's 30 layers of croissant dough, 30 layers of butter and sugar. And then it's baked upside down like this so that the butter melts down the croissant dough and then back up using convection. That's what gives it this nice, glossy, shimmery, flaky look. And we use very pasteurized butter in everything here. They turn into like a glass, almost, of that caramel on the top. Glossy and crackly, so when you bite into them, they crunch. <laughs> they're really good, but they're really rich. So you can almost like just cut these up into brownie bites. Okay, dark chocolate pistachio meringues. They're sweet, they melt in your mouth, and they just got like that nutty, chocolatey, delicious flavor to them. Probably one of my favorite items we actually have on the top row of our cakes. Sold. I want one of those. <laughs> Sausage roll. It's only 10.15 and the tall carrot cake is already disappearing. Aside from sweets and pastries, there are also sandwiches and salads. We have secured the goods. Now let's put our booty somewhere. Look up. The lighting fixture is made of glass jars fresh flowers at each table. Our selection includes chocolate pistachio meringue and croissant sandwich with rolled turkey slices. The ends of the croissant remind me of fish fins. Mamio could not resist the seasonal hand pie and gougère, which is a French cheese puff with gruyère. The interior is hollow. I want to crawl inside and take a nap. Why does it taste so familiar? You remember the crispy cheese bread I used to buy when you were a kid? Aside from turkey, the croissant sandwich also contains brie, spinach, and chili cherry mustarda. Very nice cheese. <laughs> it's quite tall, so you gotta squish it down. Because I was in a chill mood, just feeling the moment, I got relaxed about filming. Overall, everything was yummy, and we look forward to coming back to try other goodies. By the way, we got self-serve coffee, the Sea Biscuit Blend. Dodgy, aromatic, not much bitter. As for the meringue, we took it home. We give a review of it towards the end of this video. As for now, let's take a mini stroll around the outdoor dining area. 
Here's the alternative entrance if you park at the other lot. While I was walking around, Mom Yo was talking to a gentleman, who turned out to be the founder of Mukatio Coffee Roasters. He gives us a spontaneous tour. I'm Gary Smith, owner of Mukatio Coffee and founder, and we're really passionate about good coffee. Come on in. This is our first facility, one of our beautiful cast iron vintage roasters. We go to Hong Kong and we do workshops, and my wife used to run Seattle's Best Coffee, so that's it's in the family. My son Leo, my oh, soon to be daughter in law Kelsey, and my other son Blake over there. Full on family business. It is, and we have uh, more people next door. Is it a new store or? Yeah, well, we used to have one in there, and then. So this is what it's going to be like. Um, you'll be able to come through the front. Um, it, it resembles an, an, a coastal Indian longhouse because our logo is, is a Native American. We'll be able to sell our coffees, shirts, hats. Um, we've got things to hang on the wall, logos to put in. So, and we got a landscape, but that will all be done this week. The reason why we came to Whitby Island today was to go to the gardens, but you know this coffee roaster and the Sea Biscuit Bakery? That has become a very memorable experience, and the people working there, so friendly. And from here, it's about an 18 minute drive to the gardens. We made it to the Mirkirk Gardens, finally! I had a bookmark for a while, I was like, okay, gotta wait until the bloom, the flowers come out, ready to play, and then I got busy with work, and I was like, no, still can't go, still can't go, and then I was like, okay, if it's not now, when? Open seven days a week, 9 to 4 p.m. Please drop cash or check into donation box. The Mirkirk Gardens are open every day of the year, from 9 to 4. Guided tours are offered on Saturday and Sunday we visited on the last Friday of May. So happy we made it here. You know, I didn't sleep last night until like 2 a.m. I had a hard time sleeping. I was tired this morning when I woke up. I woke up at like 8 and then started getting ready and we just left the house. I was like so tired, but look at this, it's so worth it. Look at all these flowers. Founded by Anne and Max Meerkirk in the early 1960s, there are 10 acres of manicured gardens with an emphasis on rhododendrons. The gardens are surrounded by 43 acres of second growth forest with four miles of trails. Pink, purple, red. I don't know if you could hear it through the camera, but I'm seeing a lot of juicy bees buzzing around. <laughs> They're big. They're big flowers. <laughs> so when's a good time to come to this garden? Well, on their website, they have updates. Uh, last week, it said it was peak. And this week, it didn't say peak. So maybe it, actually last week it had more flowers because some of these petals are dropping, but some bushes are still yet to blossom. Tiny. I love how these blues just like kind of look like they're glowing against this green. Check out this tree. Uh, this must be the monkey puzzle tree. Wow, I've never seen it that long though. Just stunning, look at these. Stunning and pokey. Ooh, very pokey. I wonder if birds try to avoid sitting on this tree because it's so spiky. There's a map here. Uh, let's go to the nursery. Crows don't hear any cars. Hear a lot of breezes. One gallon rhododendrons, $20 each. So you could take some flowers to go. I like this rock. So I'm showing you this rock. Next to the gazebo, you get a view of the water. Mom, I'm gonna check this out here. This looks more, a little bit more like a hiking trail. To the left, we have a bird bath. To the right, we have a bench. Are those lights or just like sculptural pieces, I wonder? That looks like an area you can't get to. However, there are seats, so that is very inviting. Oh, I love that. Look at this tree. The branches are all like bendy and it goes to the ground even. Oh, what a nice space to just meditate or journal. You do have to watch your head though, because if you walk straight up, boink, you're gonna hit your face on a branch. It's a nice little space. 
Here's a quick sketch of this lovely little spot. And then I felt like doing a painting of it. This one's done in acrylic. Not sure if it's done yet. I might add a few more layers. If you didn't know yet, I post paintings on my Instagram, at Creative Chillout. A new video is coming soon on my Creative Chillout YouTube channel as well. That channel is all about arts and crafts. They provide a lot of benches. Mini dirt path. Another dirt path. They do provide a map, but we're not following a map. We're just kind of following our intuition. Behind this tree, we have another bench. This one's a little bit more shy. Here we have benches having a meeting. The bees are not everywhere. The ones with a lot of flowers that are open, those have the bees. It's a woodpecker. That bird made a lot of holes on that tree. Specifically, this woodpecker is the red-breasted sapsucker. For lunch, we drive five minutes northwest. I'm digging this landscape. Feels pretty empty. Next to the Coopville Ferry Terminal is Callens. The nearest restaurant from Callens appears to be four miles away. In front of the restaurant, there is a mini library. A wooden bench with a crab carved on one side. You can dine on the wooden deck. Dogs are welcome. Around the corner, you get a view of Crockett Lake. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just as the exterior, the interior also has many wooden elements, like the walls, floor, tables, and some of the decor. Hi, Crow. What's on your mind? Their napkins vary in design. I love this tri-colored floral pattern. There are two dining rooms. One has a bar. The other has an aquarium. A clownfish and a blue tang hangout. Nemo and Dory, is that you? Mesmerizing. I can look at this all day. The movements are so active yet calming. Oh yeah, about the food. They serve sandwiches, salads, of course seafood. Also breakfast and house-made desserts. Spicy grilled chicken sandwich for Mommy O. It's got bacon, chipotle slaw, avocado, and citrus-soaked jalapeno pepper. Sriracha mayo is zigzaggedly squeezed on top, served open-faced on a brioche bun. And for me, the cedar-planked Alaskan sockeye salmon. The lemon dill butter melts along the groove, creating a tasty stream. Comes with smashed rosemary garlic potato and vegetables of the day. Today's veggies are carrot, asparagus, and broccolini. The salmon? Mmm, it was delicious. Good news, it is not overcooked. This asparagus is so thick compared to my index finger. <laughs> you're not gonna flip it? So you're gonna eat it like a steak. You're gonna use a fork and knife. I got a bite size of Mommy O's sandwich. A little bit of everything. That's delicious. That's... Okay, if you want more flavor power, I'd go with the spicy chicken sandwich. The way Mommy O is eating her sandwich is cracking me up. She just like totally took it apart. Near the entrance are snacks. You can buy some local treats, like the Mugatillo coffee beans, and cookies by Two Crows Bakery. There's also Whitby Island ice cream waiting in the freezer. I gotta say, the wallpaper in the bathroom was stunning. The color palette is kinda 70s. The other bathroom has a chalkboard. Just across the street is Fort Casey State Park. If you have a Discover Pass, make sure you bring it. Otherwise, you do have to pay for parking. Yesterday, it was raining so much. And when I checked the weather for today, it said it's gonna be cloudy. But look at this, the sun is out. I see a lot of kids, teenagers, families just wandering about on the building, on the top, in the middle. It's two floors with a roof. And just below, there's a campground. Fort Casey was built in the late 1800s to protect the Puget Sound from any attacking ships. While no battle took place, it was used as a training facility until the 1940s. Today, the fort is part of a 476-acre marine camping park, and you just might see the ferry that takes you to Port Townsend. Fort Casey was one of three forts that made up the Triangle of Fire. The other two forts are located across the water. Fort Flagler and Fort Warden also have military batteries, which you can walk around. I feel like I'm walking inside a video game. 
I'm like waiting for zombies or soldiers to attack me. The wind passes through pretty easily around here. This is a good place to come when it's hot. Dogs welcome as long as you keep them on a leash. Because of the wind? Look at how the trees are. They're all like slanted on one side. So for today's itinerary, it was very flexible. I had a bunch of places that we wanted to check out, but if we didn't get to them, it's all good. As part of traveling, sometimes you end up spending more time in a place than you expected or less time. That's why it's always good to not like have a back-to-back -back schedule like 3 p.m. we have to be here, 4 p.m. we have to be here, 5 p.m. we have to be here. When we have a filming schedule, we do a little bit more of that side of traveling. But today our intention is to have a little bit more of a chill pace. And it's already, what time? 3.37 p.m. I'm just craving some ice cream because it's been sunny and we've been out walking. We're visiting Whitby Farm and Market. Once a historic dairy farm, some buildings that fell to unuse transformed into a lively farm market and community space. They offer locally sourced goods, including produce and meat. All right, soon they're gonna be serving coffee. Uh, they're waiting for permits. Sharing library, read here or at home and return. And this is the gift shop. They also sell ice cream by Lopez Island Creamery which is another local business here in Washington. You can choose from 32 flavors. All right, the top scoop must be the London Fog. We already tried samples of it, so we know it's good. Uh, when we're sampling, we tried three flavors, the London Fog Matcha Almond and the Chocolate Truffle. The Chocolate Truffle was a very powerful flavor. We're on to the matcha. Now you think the matcha one would look more green. The color is similar to the London Fog. Mmm. My camera just stopped filming. I don't know when. I don't know what I'm supposed to repeat. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna start heading home. It is 4.20 p.m. You know, if I had more energy, I would take us around more, show you a dinner spot, show you more cool places. But you know, it's been a long work week. Um, I can't wait to get in my pajamas. Mamio is checking her health app to see how many steps we took today. 6500. On the way back home, we're not taking the ferry. We're driving through Deception Pass State Park. Deception Pass is a strait that divides Whitby Island and Fidalgo Island. The small island between them is Pass Island, and that's the bridge we're driving on. Spanning around 4,000 acres, Deception Pass State Park has 35 miles of trails, three lakes, and campsites. Nearly 15 miles of shoreline offer beaches and coves. Here's what it looks like in the winter and in the fog. Love it. Mamio is currently arranging flowers for someone's birthday. It's now 7.30 and it's also the next day. We've yet to try the meringue. It's got holes in it, little caves. How do you describe that? Ooh, it is hollow inside. It looks like a mouth. The best meringue I ever had. <laughs> mm, it melts in your mouth. Mmm. Mm, mm, it's chocolatey. Ooh, I think this is the highlight of my day. It melts so fast, it creates like a dessert soup in your mouth. And then you got those pistachio bits. That is very nice. It's like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> A dessert from Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. Definitely recommend it. Mm. For more island videos, I put the links in the description box. There's a video on the time we went to Lopez Island and we do coastal foraging in kayaks. And there's another video for a solo trip I did to Whitby Island. If tropical islands are more your thing, Check out the travel video we filmed in the Philippines. All the links are in the description box. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. 
We want to show you Whitby Island and we're gonna get coffee when we get there because we need it. Well, I need it at least to wake me up. I don't think I ever told you guys, I developed a daily habit for coffee a couple months ago. I just noticed on the wall, there are, are these paintings? Actually, it looks like photographs and you could buy them. So we came from there, we can go to the left or to the other left or to the right. Options, let's get lost. So it seems we have visited right after the peak bloom. I thought we were coming to the peak bloom, but it's after, a little after. Boat for a small froggy. It's quite a long building. Let's start from the left and make our way through it. So if you don't have a discovery pass, question is how much do you pay to park here? One day pass pay instruction, $10 in cash or check. Uh, looks like you could do it with this machine as well, with credit card. Baby, I don't even really know. Yeah. He did all gaggy, no more. She walked, but you know the time is up, and we gotta go. She can do your back in time, I don't really know. Puzzle pieces lost, baby, I don't even really know. Money, I can't, and he's hanging. If we get another go